Hey, welcome to Married Life TV. My name is Chinda Chinda, and I help couples to discover and maximize their unique personality differences in their marriage, to enable them to navigate through all marital challenges, and to build a loving, satisfying, and fulfilling marriage. I've been married for the past 10 years, and one of the things I've discovered also from my coaching sections is that no marriage is the same. And each of the parties that make up the marriage are not the same. They all come with their different unique personalities. Even though there could be compatible traits, some common grounds, but no marriage is the same and no individual is the same. And that is why it's important to invest in your differences. There's no need to be scared of your differences, but rather your differences, it could be weakness, it could be strength, but by synergizing together, you can maximize the power of your unique differences. Today, I'll be talking about how to stop the blame game. You know, before I look into this topic today, how to stop the blame game, I was wondering, I mean, where did this blame thing come about and where did it started? What's the origin of this blame game? And uh, I was able to find out in the Holy Book, the Bible, right from Genesis, you know, God gave instruction to Adam and Eve not to eat a particular fruit, right, in the midst of the garden. And However, the women were beguiled by the serpent, as we're told in Genesis, and she ate. And as she gave to the husband as well, the God comes down to have fellowship with them in the cool of the day, in the evening time. And when he came this time around and he found out that something wasn't right because they were hiding. And God went to the man because God made man first. And he said, what happened? Were you hiding? Where are you? And the man said, the woman you gave me. Now, that was the beginning of the blame game from the holy book. So he blamed the woman. Well, for some reason, I don't, I don't get it. Because, you know, you are supposed to guide and support. You are supposed to lead. You are supposed to make sure that she's, she's all right. She's being cared for. But for some reason, I don't know why Adam left. I don't know where he was. Maybe he was jumping with the, you know, kangaroos or maybe he was you know, chasing lions. I don't know what he was doing in the garden, but for some reason he wasn't present. And that guy went to the woman and said, okay, fine, this is what has happened. Right, why? What happened here? And she said, the snake. He attributed what happened to the serpent. But let's, let's just hold on a minute. We're told on the account in Genesis that, you know, she looked at the fruit and, and she saw it as something that was good to have, was pleasing to the eye. So she had some loss, some desire, you know, to get that particular fruit. So it wasn't entirely the serpent, you know what I'm saying? However, she was also voluntarily and willingly because the serpent never took the fruit and forced it down her throat. She took it and she ate. And now God went to the serpent and said, hey, what happened here? Well, unfortunately, the serpent not have anyone to blame. So, yeah, because if he has someone to blame, I don't know. Maybe he blamed someone else. I have no clue. But for some reason, we're not giving any account that he has something to blame. So, humans love to blame. We love to blame that person. You know, when the rain is falling, we blame the rain for not going out. When we fail our exams, we blame the teachers for not teaching properly. And we have financial challenges, we blame the government, we blame, you know, different things. So this blame game has started for a very, very long time. And that takes me to what is the blame game? Well, let's, let's, let's define this word blame, really. Blame is the feeling and the declaration that something or someone is responsible for a fault or a wrong. So in other words, blame game is when 
someone is being criticized, someone is being condemned, right? When someone is held accountable, when someone is responsible for something, is liable for something, okay? And in the process, I call this, you know, the accusation game, you know what I'm saying? The criticizing game, the condemnation game, the guilt attribution game, you know, the fault attribution game, you know, the suppression game, the putting down kind of game. And this thing happens in marriages. And it's unfortunate that many couples, some of them are in the edge of falling off from their marriage vows because of blaming one another. You know, when any misfortune happens, and this is when does it happen? When any misfortune happens. When something, there's an issue, there's a problem, something isn't working right, then blame someone else. Now, you might be watching this and you have suffered a lot of blame. Maybe you are being blamed even right now for everything in your marriage. I would really, really encourage you to share this video with your spouse indirectly so they can watch. Because to be honest, it's not nice to blame someone over and over again. And we're going to get into that in a short while. But uh, I sympathize with you if you're watching this and, you know, your husband is always blaming you or your wife is always blaming you for everything that happened in your marriage, in your relationship. Uh, I sympathize with you because I know it could be very hurtful, it could be very painful to be there. It's almost like you're all by yourself. But I hope this video can just give you some relief and help you to know what to do. And if you're watching this and you are someone that blames a lot, you're someone that point fingers a lot about everything that happens, you know, I would really request humbly that you change and start thinking differently because you're just hurting someone else. Is that okay? All right, okay. Let's go now. So we've seen that it happens when Things are not just normal. Things are not happening the way we've planned. And if I say some of the examples of this is like, let's say, for instance, the man want to go to work. And in the UK now, it's winter. And this, all the leaves are all down. And uh, maybe he just tried to walk down the path and he tripped. And then he comes back and says, I told you to sweep this every morning and you haven't. Now, because of you, I slept. I almost broke my ankle blames the woman. Now the kids for some reason isn't performing very well in their schoolwork and their homework. They're not getting 100%, they're getting 80, 85% and blames the someone else and say, okay, you are not supporting them, you are not doing this and they blame. Or maybe you were in the kitchen. For some reason there's some multitasking activities going on and you know, you ask for help for somebody to, you know, come down and just support you to put in the laundry into the washing machine but that never happened. So the meal got burnt in the pan. Well, I have to blame someone. Uh, maybe you're married and uh, for some reason, you know, you've been looking for a baby and uh, the baby isn't coming yet. And you've tried several things. You've gone to the doctor. And when anything happened that is a bit awkward that could relate you to that situation, you say, it's your fault. It's your fault. Something is wrong with you. But you've gone together, you've checked, there's nothing wrong. So, and you keep blaming this person why they can be pregnant, why they can get you pregnant and all that. And you keep blame and blame and blame and blame. So there's so many scenarios that blame is happening all the time. But it's important for you to understand that when you keep blaming someone like this, it causes a lot of pain. And that's what we're going to look at in a short while. Now, why do you blame your spouse? That's another important thing. You know, if you are blaming somebody else for everything that happens in the marriage, in the relationship, at any time, at any place, you're blaming. Number one, I feel that you are blaming them because you want to prove that you're right. And he or she is wrong. Huh. 
So you want to feel like you're the one that knows everything. You want to feel like the mini God. You want to feel like I'm just, I can never make mistakes. And another reason that, oh, why you blame your spouse is because revenge. Maybe your spouse been saying something, or oh, it's because of you this happened and all that. And now when something has happened, you use the opportunity to blame them back and really bash them with a lot of criticism and condemnation and suppression and everything. You just give them everything back. And another time is because you're egocentric. You're humble. You just want to feel like you are all-knowing that you are the perfectionist. You never make mistakes. You are just someone that knows everything. So your ego and pride will not even let you admit that you were wrong. So you keep apportioning and attributing everything against your spouse. Now, when you do that constantly, what happens when you constantly blame your spouse? Obviously, something happens. That's the fact. I mean, you, you might be watching me right now and you're the one that is receiving all the blame. I mean, there's no way you're not going to feel, number one, isolated, withdrawn from him or her that is constantly bashing you with blame about everything. And this is where you disconnect. This is where, you know, connection is severed. And it's not just the withdrawal and the isolation that will start happening. Loneliness can come in. I mean, could you imagine two people are together, they are married, but somebody in the relationship is lonely. And sometimes it's not just one person. The other person could be lonely as well because this person don't want to interact with this person. And then what happens? It's inviting more trouble into the relationship. So when they withdraw, that's, that's not nice. And then the next thing again that could happen is anger bitterness, frustration, resentment. This thing can build up malice. It can build up. They can speak to one another. They don't communicate anymore. Communication is just one, 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 one words. Because when you blame someone and make somebody feel so, so suppressed, feel like they are nothing, feel like they are worthless, They've lost their confidence. They love their self-esteem. They are just almost on the floor. And you loves it. Wow. I mean, that, that's just so unfair. Because, you know, one of the things I've realized, I mean, you could do your research, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm a coach myself. And, and extensively I've also read. And I've realized, even based on research, that for some reason... I'm not saying this is particularly uh, the same everywhere. It could vary based on different factors. But a lot of times the, the women are, you know, being bashed with blames. A lot of times. I don't know, for some reason, sometimes the guys, we feel that, you know, we know it all. And, and you know, the guys have this, you know, ego something, ego whatever they think they have. And because the woman could be soft and tender and may not be able to, you know, put her shoulder up all the time and everything that happens, the woman just takes the blame. About the kids, they take the blame. The food, they take the blame. The house, they take the blame. You know, financial problem in the family, they take the blame. They couldn't travel, they, she, they take the blame. You know, they couldn't go on holiday, they take the blame. You know, they couldn't go grocery, they take the blame. There was no milk for tea, they take the blame. Everything, they just keep blaming them. You know, I, I, and if you're listening to me as a woman, I, I'm sorry. You know, I feel really sad that, you know, you're going through what you're going through. And I'm praying that... You will send this video to, to, to your husband for him to kind of wake up. And if you're the husband that is also being bashed constantly with blame for everything, you know, send this to your wife as well. So that probably, you know, but if you can learn something out of this video and start thinking differently and see how you can support one another going forward. And now one of the most dangerous things that happens when you continue to blame is it leads to separation and sometimes divorce. 
because the person cannot take this anymore. They will be looking at the other person as, you know, I can't just meet up with this person's high, whatever perfection is, characteristics. And they will just say, you know what? I can't deal with this anymore. There's always a massive consequences if you don't do something about, you know, constantly bashing your spouse with blame. You need to know that there's no point focusing on just one person when anything happens because you can't solve the problem. The problem will continue to persist. And sometimes the other spouse that is always giving out and dishing out this blame, they forget that when problems are shared and they are mutually worked on, it gives satisfaction, it gives joy. I mean, when you were single and you got married to this man, to this woman, you're getting married because you believe that both of you can resolve issues, you can work together. But now you're married and you're portioning and you're attributing everything that goes wrong to somebody in the marriage. And one of the things also I realized that based on my coaching and research is that, yeah, you could find some significant level of um, blame from one another within the marriage, but sometimes one person is on the upper side of blame, the extreme side of blame. They constantly blame. So the other person, because they don't want to feel like they can't talk, they can't speak, they also try to look for ways or means to also make the other person feel that they also have issues, some problems. And it's not just them. So, let's look at the last one. How to stop blaming your spouse from today. Seriously, today. Because you can't blame your spouse forever. I mean, this was for better or for worse, right? And you guys came together because you believe that you can work things out. So, how do you stop blaming? Number one, you need to accept when you are wrong. Now, if you're very egocentric, you're proud, you're someone that don't listen, you're very heady, it's very difficult for you to accept that you're wrong. But if you want to stop blaming, if you want your relationship back, if you want connection, love, happiness and harmony, if you want satisfaction, fulfillment, if you want God's presence in here, then just accept that you are wrong. And then apologize, number two. You need to apologize to your spouse. You know, sometimes some apologies are not really apology. You know what I'm saying? They just, just mumble things off and just say some things. And you're thinking that they are serious. Your apology must be sincere, hearty, absolutely honest about it. And also resolve in your mind that you're not going to just be hurting your spouse with constant blame. Because it's not fair, right? And now you that is being uh, blamed for everything, it should be nice for you to forgive. When, when your spouse sincerely comes to you, it would be nice to just let go and move on. Because your peace is important. Your happiness is important. Your internal calmness is important if you want to survive and enjoy your marriage, if you don't want it to go down the failure route. And then what do you do? Both of you should understand that you are on the same team. Regardless of whatever is the challenges or the difficulties, regardless of whatever is happening in your marriage, problems solved together, bonds you together, strengthens your marriage, gives you this sense of satisfaction that you're actually working together for a common goal overall. So that is why it's important for you to ensure that you work together and be open in your communication and be honest and do things and act so that this blame thing, because it's, it's been around for, for ages, and if you want to change your life and change your relationship, you need to change the way you see your spouse and see them as a team member. See them as someone that can actually help you and bring the best out of you. That's, just, that's why you marry. That's why you said I do in the first place. Now, I want to say something about some couple of words, which one of them 
you shouldn't use. And that is you. See, this word you can be very dangerous for your marriage. Especially when some things happen. There's some stress, some strain, and some uh, unpleasant, unforeseen circumstances have just happened to the kids, to your marriage, to your job, and to different things like that. You need to be absolutely careful so that you don't begin to say, it was your fault that the children are not doing this. It's you that caused it. It's you that made this to happen. You use the word you all the time just because you have some family issues, just because you have some challenges right now. However, you can use these three walls that you can use all the time to actually help you move your relationship forward and to stop this blame thing. You use the word we, you use the word us. See what I mean? And our. These three words, absolutely important for you to use this word constantly if you really want to make your other half know that we are in this together. Okay, let's say for instance, uh, there was a challenge financially. You don't say, oh, because you never got a job, oh, because you never got a raise. It's okay. We have these challenges. What can we do so that we can improve our finances? That's a better way to approach that. Now, the kids are having some challenges. What can we do? Should we get a tutor to support while we also support them? What are we going to do to help the kids be better? Now, we're not spending a lot of time together. No, say, you don't spend a lot of time with me. You don't do this. You don't. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not the way to say it. Honey, uh, for some reason, we are not spending a lot of time together. And I'm feeling a little bit that we're not close enough. Uh, do you mind if we can plan how to spend more time together? That makes sense. Together, together, together. Run towards each other whenever there's any challenges. Because that's the only way you can be stronger. You can build a very satisfying and a relationship that will be very, very fulfilling. Well, I would like you to comment on this video. Maybe you have some other uh, ways you handle blame game in your marriage, in your relationship. I would like you to comment. I will be very happy to know more from you. And also possibly others who also want to know how good you are and how you've been able to overcome this blame game that's been around for a very, very long time. And I also suggest that you also subscribe to our channel and share it as well because we because we want to do whatever we can to provide you with value content that can support your marriage and support your relationship as well. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you in our next video.